Hello students. In the previous lesson we have already learned about the different parts of the flower. There we have already learned about the calyx, corolla, endosium and gynosium. Now today's lesson is about the male reproductive organ that is the stamen and we are going to learn about the structure of the anthers as well as the structure of the pollen grains and how the male gametes are being formed in the process of reproduction. The stamen. Stamen is the male reproductive organ of the flower. Now, the stamen has got two parts. One is the anther and the stalk-like structure that is the filament. This in between this, this line is the connective. This is actually the sterile part of the stamen which does not play any role in the process of reproduction. Only the anther, the pollen producing region is playing an important role in the reproduction process. In the next part, we are going to learn about the different types of anther lobes. Based on the different types of anther lobes, we are going to learn about uh, learn the two types that is the monothecus and the dithecus. Monothecus means it has got only one lobe and it is found in hibiscus. In dithecus, we are going to see that it has got two lobes and it is found in the crotal area. Now, anther can further be classified into different types based on its attachment with that of the filament. Now, here you can see the filament is being attached to the basal part of the anther and this is known as the pacifixed. Next, when the filament is being attached to the dorsal side of the anther, then it is said to be dorsifixed. Here you can see that the filament is being running throughout the anther. Here you can see this. This is known as adnate. And in another special type of anther which is actually a type of basifixed anther. Here you can see that the filament, this filament is being attached to the dorsal side of the anther but it is loosely attached and it actually swings very easily and this is found generally in the anemophilus flower. We have already learned about the dithecus anther. In this dithecus anther, if we make a transverse section of the anther, then we are going to have a picture like this. Here, we are going to see that dithecus anther has got two lobes, this one lobe and this is another lobe. Now, these two lobes, each of these two lobes have got two microsporangia. This is the microsporangia. One, two, three and four. So, in total, we are going to we are going to have four microsporangia in the dithecus anther. This part we have already discussed that this part is the connective which is the sterile part of the anther which does not play any role in the reproduction process. Now, from the microsporangia, from the microsporangia, to the outside, if we say to the outside, this part, this part is known as anther wall. So, from the microsporangia to the outside, this part is known as the anther wall. And this anther wall has got four layers. What are these layers? Let's see. The outermost part, this part, is the epi 
epidermis which is composed of single layer of flat cells next to the epidermis we are going to see another type of layer which consists of cells that are radially arranged now next we are going to see two to three layers of middle layers and that is known as the middle layer now another type of layer which we are going to see here is the special type of layer known as stapeterm and this stapeterm is actually providing the nourishment to the pollen grains the three layers which we have just now discussed that is the epidermis endothelium and the middle layers they actually provide protection to the microsporangium now when the anthers are being matured now these three layers they actually become fibrous now when they become fibrous throughout the anther portion they become fibrous except two portions which we are going to learn this part and this part except this two part all over the anther they become fibrous so at this point where the anther remains delicate this is the site of dehiscence of anther that is occurred now if you take a close view of this microsporangia you are going to see different type of cells inside this microsporangium and these cells are known as the archesporial cells or the sporogenous cells now when the anther becomes matured this microsporangia also gets enlarged and the cells inside it they also become bigger and this bigger type of cells result in the formation of microspores and this formation of microspores are known as microsporogenesis now all this microspores that is being formed when the anther is getting mature all this microspores will obviously not result in the formation of pollen grain some of the microspores will get degenerated and the microspores which will ultimately result in the formation of pollen grain they will become the mother cells that is the microspore mother cells this microspore mother cell that is being formed which will ultimately lead to the pollen grains they are diploid in nature now this microspore mother cell they undergo first meiotic division that is first is meiosis that means what the microspore mother cell will result in the formation of two haploid cell by meiosis 1 and then again by meiosis 2 this two haploid cells will result into formation of tetrad of the four haploid pollen cells now this tetrad formation that is being taken place during the first meiotic division can be observed in different forms if we see three nucleus in front and the fourth nucleus just behind it this type of condition is known as tetrahedral if we see all the four nucleus from outside then we are going to say this as isobilateral if we see the arrangement of nucleus is this type then we are going to say this as decaset if the nucleus are arranged in linear form in linear form 
then we are going to say this as linear type of tetrad and if the arrangement of nucleus is like this then we are going to say this as t shaped now most common type of tetrad that we get to see is the isobilateral now this microspores are arranged in a cluster of four cells that is the microspore tetrad by the callus walls now the callus wall is broken down by an enzyme called callase and the microspores become free as a result it develops into pollen grains and when the anther becomes mature they release this pollen grains and this pollen grain they produce the male gamete now the study of this pollen grains is known as palynology now if we see the structure of the pollen grain here we are going to see that it has got two layers one is the egg sign that is the external part sporopollenin that is been secreted by the egg sign is actually resistant to the chemical and biological decomposition another part the inner part is the intain it is composed of cellulose and pectin at certain places you going to see that the exine remains thin now when the thin areas when the thin areas this area this area this area these areas when they are circular in shape then they are said to be germ pore and when the thin areas are elongated they are said to be germ furrows now when the pollen grain is being formed from the microspore different types of changes we are going to see this pollen grain is the first cell of male gametophyte now it contains one haploid nucleus now when the cell undergoes first mitotic division that means the pollen grain this pollen grain they it undergoes first mitotic division so both karyokinesis as well as cytokinesis occur when division of nucleus is occurring here we get to see what one is the generative nucleus another one is the pollen tube nucleus this pollen tube nucleus is also known as the vegetative nucleus because it does not involve in reproduction process and why it is said to be pollen tube nucleus because it results into the formation of pollen tube later on now another type of nucleus that is being formed here is the generative nucleus that means it generates the male gametes as result this pollen grain is generally discharged from the anther at this two cell stage however in some plants we see that the just generative nucleus they divide further to give rise to two male gametes before they are discharged and then what happens further development occurs and this further development occurs generally on the stigma after the pollination now the pollen grain absorbs water nutrients from the stigmatic secretion through its germ pore the tube cell enlarges and it comes out of the pollen grain through this germ pore or the germ furrows to form a pollen tube this pollen tube secretes enzymes and hydrolytic enzymes so that it can create a passage through the style of the female part now the tube nucleus descends to the tip of the pollen tube and what happens the genitive cell the 
divides into two non-motile male gametes. Each of these male gametes that is being formed is basically spherical or lenticular in outline. Now the tube nucleus they degenerate and the pollen grain with the pollen tube which is carrying the male gamete is actually representing the mature male gametophyte and it is a three cell structure bearing one tube cell and two male gametes. In the next part we are going to learn the structure of the female gametophyte and then we are going to learn about the fertilization process that is being taken place. Some important things which you need to know or you need to remember is that this pollen grains which we are talking about they are very much rich in nutrients and they are sometimes in some places they are edible as tablets of serums. Now as we have discussed about its advantages it has got disadvantages as well that the, some plants having pollen grains they may cause allergy and this may result into hay fever. Now it also may cause some bronchial afflictions in certain persons like it can cause respiratory disorders as well. So this is all about the structure of pollen grains as well as we have learned how the male gametes are being formed which is ready to enter into the female part of the flower.